and intimate in a car. Why she now says her partner's car insurance should pay her auto injury. She got an STD in a car that was insured by GEICO. And now GEICO may have to pay her $5.2 million for her auto injury. The woman filed an auto injury claim after she just got HPV while having sex in a car. The owner of the car is insured by GEICO. She says the man who has the GEICO car insurance didn't tell her about his health condition. So far, the woman has won three cases in Missouri, but now GEICO is countersuing the pair in federal court. Geico Car Insurance says it is not liable for the STD because, quote, damages claim did not arise out of the normal use of the vehicle. There's been an accident like Geico. The car was burned up like Tracy and Michael. <laughs> my, my bad, y'all. It's coffee. What up? I'm just flucking around. Y'all remember them bars from Kanye West through the wire. You know, Ye was talking about spitting it through the wire. You know, jaw was broke, got in a car accident, guy go to the insurance company and all that. And, you know, we're talking about STDs contracted from getting banged in a car. So kind of like getting burnt, I guess. You know what I mean? I don't know. I try to throw it in there. Let me know what y'all think. If you appreciated or found the reference comical, even though I think getting burnt is kind of more. I mean, I don't know. Comment y'all below. Like getting burnt is more just catching an STD period or the clap or gonorrhea or something that burns. You know what I mean? Because we're talking about HPV here. This is just a crazy situation. Some like game changing type ish where this woman is suing. Well, we shouldn't say suing. She's actually won. You know what I mean? Um. And has been awarded 5.2 million. And more or less in, in layman's terms, I guess, like Geico has appealed and it's going to go before like federal Supreme Court and it's going to go down with a jury. As you know, in lawsuits, a lot of the times, you know, they try to determine negligence and, and then if there is negligence determined or whatever, someone's liable, then they'll try to come to a settlement or go see an arbitrator, try to take every route except for going to a jury trial, which is ultimately what's going to happen in this situation. And that's set for October. So we're definitely going to try to update you guys on this case. So stay tuned um, and make sure you're subscribed. If you're new to this channel, hit the like for me and all that. We talk about everything on this channel from hip hop to news to sports to crazy ish like this and, you know, many other stuff, movie, TVs, all that. And it's all about hearing from you in the comment thread. So make sure you comment as well as hit me up about good video topics and stuff like that. But getting back to what we're talking about here, this is absolutely bonkers, absolutely insane. You just see these headlines Geico may have to pay William, woman $5.2 million because someone that they insured banged her and gave her an STD, which was HPV in their vehicle, which was a Hyundai Genesis, which is a nice car. I wonder if uh, that brand is going to take a hit at all. We'll know if we see within a year or two if they decide to take that off the market or something you know like hyundai definitely doesn't want their car to become synonymous with hpv which is a crazy std you know not typically something we talk about on this channel but um stds and whatnot but why not fuck it right um but from my understanding it can give women like female cancers i guess we'll call it like ovarian cervical cancer and other ish like that and then if i'm not mistaken isn't there another strain of hpv that can cause warts i don't know anyone who's got any of that ish out there i feel for you um it's gotta suck to catch a std um a friend of mine had a close friend that actually caught herps when she lost her virginity so everyone strap up be safe out there it's a crazy world this we already know but i mean i guess the average person rolls the dice uh with their life 
a couple times throughout their life anyways it is what it is i ain't knocking you so if you do got that going on in your life i truly feel bad for you real talk uh but back to what we're talking about here and stay tuned at the end of the video uh there's a clip i'm gonna share with you guys that has two like analysts talking about this case and you know where it's at now and how it got here it kind of can break it down a little bit better than jay coffee talk can but basically back in 2017 this woman uh you know got a claim together i guess consulted with an attorney and said hey this guy that i banged in his car that was insured by geico knew he had hpv i guess he had a cancerous tumor still banged her infected her and real quick i just want to stop right there and say uh you know originally when i heard this and i thought this in my head i said well how did she prove that one this guy infected her unless he admitted it or not you know and if she this truly did happen to her comment and let me know if you guys think she definitely deserves um to be compensated and if you think geico should be on the hook because i guess originally she was just seeking damages and you know uh covering her bills and pain and suffering and all that just from this guy she was trying to hold him liable but somewhere along the line i'm guessing she had a really smart attorney you know uh, geico got pulled into the claim because they insured this guy right Again, timeline, we start back in 2017. Um, Geico and I believe the guy were um, contacted and say, hey, you know, we're going to be seeking damages. We're coming with a lawsuit. Hit us up if you want to get together and try and negotiate a claim or something like that. And originally, I guess they were willing to take $1 million. I bet Geico at this point um, definitely wishes they would have paid that $1 million. Even if they go on to win this suit in a federal court, uh, just from their name being out there tied to something so foul like this and everything and the legal expenses and everything, uh, they for sure, for show, I'm betting you wish they would have paid. But again, I'm wondering, I'm like, how did she prove the guy infected her? And two, how did she approve that it went down in the car? Like, was there video surveillance or, or what? But nonetheless, here we are. She must have had some kind of good evidence or the guy admitted it to get where, where we're at now. Because comment and let me know if you guys agree. When I originally hearing this, I'm like, is this some kind of scam? That would be a crazy plot twist, right? If uh, she just knew a dude and said, hey, you got Geico, that's good insurance. I came, I schemed up with this idea let's say this happened and say you infected me. I don't know. Cause when you hear in this, I'm like, is this some kind of slip and fall money or something like that? Does anyone remember back in the nineties when there'd be all those reports that, you know, people would go to someone's house, fall down the stairs, sue the people whose house it was homeowners insurance, then sue the, the concrete company, sue the, the lumber company that made the wood for the stairs. Like just get real off the charts with it. You know what I mean? Uh, with, suing everyone there used to be all kinds of stories and stuff like that but i guess over the years that ish has calmed down but going back to this then you hear that you know she's won three times already in missouri now it's going to the federal like supreme court or whatever i'm like oh did she won three other cases of lawsuits she's just a beast with it that makes it sound even more like she's some kind of scam artist but no the three wins that they're talking about are all related to this case where i guess originally the first time they won then they met with an arbitrator that awarded the money or whatever geico got looped in then they went again and that was upheld so it's all pertaining to this case the three wins and again stay tuned for the clip at the end here where these analysts explain it a little better because you hear of a big company like Geico being in this situation, it's like, damn, you know, normally um, companies, corporations and whatnot, they got attorneys on deck, especially an insurance company to shut ish down. But I guess uh, Geico fucked up and didn't meet some of the time restraints or whatever and didn't have their case together and lost. You know, they, they didn't take it serious. Maybe I don't know, but they didn't have their ish together and loss and that's what they're trying to say we didn't have time to put a good case together the judge said nah you're wrong so geico dropped the ball one way or another but aside from all that where we're at now where, where they're going to the supreme court 
And they're saying, you know, how can we be one of the, you know, counter suit claims that they're saying is this is not something that should be covered under car insurance. This isn't an accident. This isn't, you know, something to that effect where someone was hurt or damaged to someone's car. This is someone getting bust down in the vehicle. That's got nothing to do with us. But um, I don't know. You know, when it comes to a lot of ish with contracts and lawsuits and the fine print and all that, it's all about the language and the semantics, you know. So I don't know. I'm, I'm intrigued by all this to see what happens. But again, I want to know what you guys think. You know, do you think this is something that uh, should be held liable for a company? Like how could an insurance company, you know, know this type of personal ish is going to be done in the vehicle of someone they insure hell i wonder if this happens are we going to you know and they do the the this uh judgment is upheld and she does get the 5.2 million um you know is this something we're going to see try to happen again our car insurance company is going to definitely be you know putting clauses in there it don't matter if you get piped down or what happens in the car we ain't got ish to do with that our other people's car insurance going to go up because they're going to like, I don't know. This is all wild, mind blowing ish, something you would see in the news and dismiss it as clickbait or a joke or something like that. But indeed, it is all facts. It's real. It's going on. Let's talk about it all below in the comments. Again, make sure to subscribe. To, stay tuned for more content. And I'll leave you guys with this uh, clip of these analysts breaking it all down is coffee i'm out of here thanks for watching peace a um a case that is predicated on a lot of technicality mm -hmm. um it's not just it's not quite as simple as is geico responsible although that is the genesis of this it's now escalated to 5.2 million because of some technicalities within the lawsuit filings and times of responses and all of that stuff which we'll get into but at its face value does Geico have to pay up? Uh, at its face value, I mean, just me you know, prognosticating, no. I don't, I don't think they should have to pay up. But it sounds like they, they messed up the legalese of this and missed a bunch of deadlines and didn't respond uh, when they were given notice by the uh, person making the claims and the accusations. And so because of that, they, they missed a lot of opportunities to settle this for less money and to argue uh, – the, the merits of the original issue that you brought up about whether or not, you know, Geico should be held responsible for this woman contracting an STD while inside of the car. Um, and, and so from just that standpoint, you know, I, I don't necessarily think that Geico should have to play, pay, but because of the way they fumbled this uh, legally, uh, it looks like they're going to be out of pocket here. I, I, I mean, these victories that she has are, are mounting. Right. And you sort of, you summarized it really well. And I think, Q, you, you might agree, like at first glance, it doesn't make a ton of sense that Geico would be responsible for this. But then when you start pulling back the layers and you understand the missed deadlines um, and, you know, they're, that they said, well, we didn't have a chance to respond to the suit. And a judge has already said, yes, you did. And you, you, you missed all of those opportunities. Um, what are your thoughts? Well, my, my first thought was like, she's, she's lost her mind. Like, this is, this is unbelievable that you were that Geico will be liable for you catching an STD from knocking boots in the car unprotected. Now, and, and it, the fact that, that it's a chance that she may get awarded $5.2 million, it's, it's, it's like, it baffles me. I just can't believe that we're at this point of, of I guess, the judicial system or America or somebody can get sued uh, in car insurance company for them catching an STD from a sexual act. I think this is I think this is like way out of left field. Just I, I think Geico should try to get the best, most highest paid lawyer, lawyer team, uh, who's ever living from OJ's team and get them because they should not prepare a dime for this nonsense. I think it's nonsense and nasty. So <laughs> the act itself, look, car, ain't nothing wrong with car sex. That's but protect yourself. That's probably one of the top five car sexes ever. Car sex, but that's not nasty for that. But not protect yourself is the nasty part. <laughs> well, it begs the question: What are the other four? But maybe that's for another show. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's, that's, let's that's fine. We'll talk about that another show. Um, let's not. <laughs> so the the judges um, who've already seen this case right. um, said that um, 
She had initially submitted a claim to GEICO more than a year ago. In February of 2021, she sent the company, this is from an NPR article, by the way, she sent the company a copy of the lawsuit that she was about to file against the insured man. And at that time, she offered to settle the claim for $1 million, which would have been a bargain at that point for Geico to say, fine, we'll settle. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, Drew. Well, I was just going to say, there's the devil is in the details in this one, and there are so many different moving parts, because initially, as you were just reading, her claim was against the man uh, right. for knowingly infecting her with HPV, saying that he had a tumor, uh, a cancerous yeah. tumor, and he knew about throat. it, yes. and, right. and then still went through with uh, unprotected uh, sex with her. So she, her initial claim was with her. Then she looped in Geico. Him. Right. Or excuse me, with him, yes. And then she looped in Geico, uh, which... You know, if, if you're going after people for wrongdoing, why not go after the insurance agency who refused to uh, back this guy? Uh, and so she goes after this insurance agency, and the insurance agency could have settled for a million dollars just out of court and washed their hands with it, said we're done with this, and move on. Uh, and they didn't. They didn't respond. Okay, so this is the other question I want answered, and I don't have the answer tonight, is how, how, what sort of brainstorming session did she have with an attorney at the beginning of this to say... How can we figure out a way? Oh, the car insurance company. That's that's pretty um, good lawyer. Strategic, yeah. No, that's, it's, it's called a conniving woman. That's what it's called. <laughs> this ain't this ain't. Listen, oh, come on. men oh, file frivolous uh, lawsuits all the time. Get out of here. Well, no, no, no. I ain't say all women. Men out of here. file frivolous I, lawsuits all the I, time. Talking about, I say a woman. I ain't say all women. I say this sounds like a con. This I don't think it's our first time doing something like this. I don't think it's the first time. Okay, well, you can't, yeah, you can't make that claim without backing it up. So we don't know how many other lawsuits she may or may not have filed. That well, I'm is just throwing an opinion. I don't strike think that a... from the record. 